A year ago, I wrote this on my wall. It says, The greatest love story of all time. 60-year-old woman gets catfished by 30-year-old virgin. One year ago, I wrote that on my wall. Today, we are on round three, the final deep dive on Samit and Jenny from 90 Day Fiance. They are the couple that I'm talking about. A 60-year-old woman who goes on Facebook when she's down on her luck. She finds a guy called Michael, Michael Jones. Jones, who's 30, English, ripped, and he likes her. He likes her so much that he wants to date her and profess his love to her. She soon finds out he's not Michael Jones. He's Michael Jones, but not that. He's Indian and his name is Samit. I don't know his last name. I'm just gonna guess a Rundibob. Not only is he not a ripped English guy, he is a pudgy Indian dude from India. And guess what? She likes it. No, no, no. She loves it because we are 10 years deep into a relationship. So today I'm gonna do the final video. Thank you to everyone who subscribed, by the way, in the last video with all the money not from your fucking donations. I was managed to get a kurta and I'm wearing another one. None of that's actually true, but the kurta is true. So I hope that you subscribe so I can get more things like this in the future when I do these videos, because I like being a fashion person. If you have a video or couple or thing that you want me to actually uh, look at, then you can follow me at 16leo underscore on my Instagram, and you can subscribe, because that would make me and Rufus fairly happy. All right. So like I said, this is part three. If you'd like to watch the other two, then go for it. You don't actually need context other than the fact these two love each other. It's been 10 years and he catfished her into loving him. So fantastic relationship, right? I think we can all learn a thing or two from this relationship. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter what culture you're from. You can catfish anyone if you put your mind to it. Before we get into Samit and Jenny, ugh, I'd like to mention a few words about today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon is on a mission to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. It's a no BS product. I am human, so that means as much as I try not to, I sometimes lose or misplace things. Earbuds being one of those things. Luckily though, since Raycons are so affordable, it's not as big of a hit to my well-being if I do. They actually offer buy now, pay later options for as little as $18 at checkout. So if you're in need of earbuds but short on cash, this is a great option. I'm also a big fan of these easy to use touch features. I'm a shuffler of songs. I need the right song for whatever I'm doing in the moment. So I'm hitting that shuffle function all the time, and for when I don't want my music interrupted by a pesky scam caller or an annoying family member, there's the super handy reject calls feature. Raycon earbuds provide up to 8 hours of playtime, plus the charging case allows for 32 hours of battery life. I actually get taken aback when I have to charge the case, because they last for so long. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com 16leo to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thanks Raycon! All right, with that, let's let's just start. Baby, happy birthday. Oh my god. So it's Jenny's 186th birthday today, and um, Samit is doing something very, very sweet for her. She was just trying to rest and forget about it, and he's like, baby, you're older. I'm Jenny. I am 62 years old, about to be 63, living my best life. Say what you want about Jenny. She is a cougar and then some. When you're 60 something, could you pull a girl or guy who's half your age, literally? This girl is doing things that most people could only dream of. So, uh, you know, thumbs up for Jenny. 63 years old, living her best life, being the best wife. She's not married. That's the whole problem in this video. I forgot to tell you guys. Jenny's issue is that she's still not married after 10 years. And if she waits 10 more years, it expires. So she needs to get married really fast. Samit is not someone who can be convinced of things. He doesn't like to commit. Also, his parents don't like the relationship. And the whole culture clash is a thing that they still have to face, even three deep dives in. So although it's her birthday, they're still in sort of the same position they've always been in. Missionary. I already know everything I need to know. I don't need to be taught anything about different sex positions and sexual... Our relationship has faced a lot of obstacles, a lot of challenges probably more than anyone else's in the world. Yes, you guys are the most special couple of all time. No other couple has ever, fa have you watched Django Unchained? That guy had to abolish and end, you know, a run of certain people to get the love of his life. But you no, know, you guys are, you guys are up there. You know that uh, I have a soldier. I want to just go to him and ask him what I can do so we can get married. 
So the series starts with something that I find funny. I think in cultures it's different, but Sumit goes to an astrologer who then tells him what to do about his marriage and how he can proceed with it because he really, really takes the advice of an astrologer very seriously. And I know some people are like, okay, that's just a dude from NASA who can make it into the country. But for Sumit and Jenny, this is as close to God as they're getting. Astrology is a, a very, very common in India. I believe that he could guide us the right way to like convince my parents to get married. So we're literally at this point, Sumit is like, I need the astrologer to tell my parents to let me get married. The astrologer needs to look at my parents and say, look at this moon. Look at the sun. The moon is cold, the sun is hot. Your sun is cold, Jenny's hot. Marry it. Maybe that would be the only way that the parents actually can understand. There's a lot of pressure on this astrology thing. He must have been five or six years old. His father actually came. That is when I told that you will have big trouble about this kid because his marriage is a failure and he will surely go for a lady with an older age. You saw that from the astrology charts. When he was six years old, he told his dad he was going to be a failure at marriage and he's going to marry an old white lady. Can someone read my charts in the comments, please? If I was five years old and I knew what I was going to be 20 years down the line, I wouldn't even care. I just listen to that guy and then live my life. Can this dude tell me what I'm going to eat for dinner? McDonald's, you fat fuck. Oh my God, he knows. Do you have your date of birth in time? Um, I love I'll get this for you. Uh, 14th of February, 1482, time of birth. They didn't have clocks back then, so I'm guessing daylight. The planets will work the way they are designed to, so we cannot alter the fate. So you have to maintain peace and calmness. Otherwise, trust me, if you two will force a marriage, you two will end up fighting. Holy shit. Did you need a planet to tell you that if they force a marriage, they're gonna end up fighting? Did you need the planets to align to get that information into your fat, thick skull? Are you serious? This is what you come to the astrologer for? He also said, don't start creating fights. I don't know if this guy is a planetary person and he needs the science-based planets or he's just a common sense human being. I'm not sure which it is, Summit. I mean, it's sad. I wish that the man that I love could just make a decision. He can't make a decision. He needs planets in order to make decisions. This guy literally is looking up at the stars in India being like, hmm. Not today. Jenny's probably looking at the planets like, bitch, how come Saturn has more rings than I do? What are you doing, Summit? Stop listening to anybody else, be it your mom, your parents, anybody, and, and go ahead and do what you want to do. This is what you say you want. Your best chance of getting married is to call up Neil deGrasse Tyson and ask him to convince Summit to marry you. You need that goofy man with the tie to be like, hey, look, NASA called, they want you to marry Jenny. That's what you need. Earlier today, I got an email telling me that my visa extension was closed instead of approved. So Jenny is not happy because she had to listen to this whole thing about if the planets do their thing, then things will work out and let's not force marriage. Jenny at the same time has her visa application denied and she's been living off of the visa renewals for the longest time because every six months she has to go back home because she can't stay there indefinitely until she gets married. It's probably causing a lot of stress on her. Jenny's not good with stress and sometimes she explodes and she has never been as angry as she's going to in the scene. We need to figure it out if it's possible, like staying in nearby country. Nepal border is open so we can stay in there for like a couple of months. So Sumit's plan instead of Jenny going back is to go to Nepal and stay there for three months. This man didn't have enough money to get a house last time, but now he wants to relocate his whole life to Nepal. Are you going to climb Everett? What are you doing? Hello, we are planning to go to Nepal. Is there oh, border? are open over there like flights are running oh you don't even know he doesn't even know he do, he just called hello nepal do you guys take indian and old white lady you big yeah white no man, she's i don't know okay bye they're not running nepal border is closed and any other country like uh, where we can go i don't have my passport right now actually i lost my passport oh what the hell is wrong with you Okay, so in the middle of Summit trying to formulate a plan on the spot, he's like, yo, is there any country that I can take my beautiful girlfriend to while we wait for the, the passport to get renewed? And in the middle of saying that, he's like, oh, I don't have my passport. I lost it. Is there anywhere that we can go without a passport for me? Uh, is there uh, like any country where uh, Indians can go without passport? Yes. India. No, there is no other country. Oh my god. Yep, so, so Samit actually uh, gets bamboozled 
I don't know how he thought this was ever going to work. This was probably the worst plan I think he's ever had. I've seen him do some terrible lies and have some horrible plans. This was easily the most half assed plan. Go against your parents and get married, then I can stay in the country. If I go against the parents, you know the threat. Now I have to go back to America, back to nothing again? So, rightfully so, Jenny is frustrated. She's like, listen, you're still not able to make a decision. You just called Nepal, they said, what? I'm angry. And I completely understand her. She does go a bit overboard, like a lot, but I, but I understand her frustration. I'm ruining my life, basically, you know that? Okay, that's a little guilt tripping. That's a little, little guilt trip right there. I don't know about her whole life is ruined, because if we, if we go back a few minutes, she said, and I quote, I'm living my best life. Living my best life. I'm ruining my life, basically, you know that? Best life ruining my life. You choose. You promised me we were gonna get married this time. But do you know the situation or not? Don't do you know my situation or not? I know, I know better. No, you don't. I know. Okay, well, I've never seen Samit fight before, but his fighting is like, I know. Jenny, behave, please calm down. He's usually the one who diffuses situations. He's also usually the one who says, we're gonna come up with a plan and proceeds to sleep and not do the plan. I can't stay in the country. I'm not gonna keep doing it. You're not gonna keep telling me you're gonna marry your not. I thought she called him a, a thought. thought. I was like, wow, did you find him at the club? Do they have clubs in India? They probably do. They probably have like dance numbers from Bollywood songs. I know I'm romanticizing it, but oh my God. Wouldn't that be cool? Like it's the time to disco? Ah. It's the time to Crap! Excuse me. <laughs> oh, she really blew up at him. She threw the plastic chair. You know, if she threw like a big chair, she'd be like, Ugh. All right, I'm staying for a couple years. My back is. <laughs> I'm sorry. So that ends episode one where um, Hurricane Jenny comes in and storms out saying she does not want to go back to America. And like I said, she did overreact, but at the same time, I, I do understand exactly how she's feeling. That frustration and pent up aggression when you're constantly close to something, but you don't get it. I understand. I understand. Every now and again, people lose it. People lose their shit. They just need a little hug. And Submit knows this. So he goes to the room in the next episode and he tries to hug her. No, I don't want to listen. I, I just only force you to calm down. Okay, I'm calm. Now what? No, you're not. Samit's trying to defuse the situation. He's like, I'm going to force you to calm down. Which sounds like, you know, damn, dude. But at the same time, uh, he's not actually a very assertive person. I actually remember in the last video we did. Oh, I did. I remember this. Um, he said that he likes to be dominated and then laughed. I'm dying at the thought of that. All right. <sighs> what do you expect from me, Samit? What am I supposed I to do? I expect you to uh, like just behave like a very calm person. I bet you he thought act your age. I bet you he thought of saying that. But if he said that, she would have probably choke slammed him like the Undertaker. Probably. But and I can't my... stay in India. Yeah, you're not the one America. that has to fly anywhere and pay the money. I am. Well, hold on. Can I ask you guys a question? Why didn't Samit ever go to America? Ever? It's been 10 years. Is he wanted? Jenny keeps going back to America. She's like, I can't keep going back to America. I hate this place. India's worse, but I hate that place too. She's constantly going back, complaining. Why doesn't she say, if you want me, you can come to America? Y'all be weak in the knees. Stand up. Stand up. What? Why has this not been a thing? I cannot believe you guys didn't think of this in 10 years. You guys are looking at the wrong planets. You should look at my planets. They align. I want to be with you. I love you. And you also love me. I love when people squat sit. It's the sexiest thing of all time. Do you want to know the, the most uh, horrible image ever? Just by the way, I was thinking about this the other day. Just close your eyes real fast, real fast. Please, trust me. Imagine this. Person you really have a crush on, love, whatever. Squatting naked. I know, it's the worst position of all time. Squatting is just, it's sexy when you do it at the gym. When you're just doing it in public, it's horrible. I'm just so mad and so upset and so frustrated and fed up. It's Jenny, go back to America. We will never ever be able to marry there. I will never be your wife. Well, so Jenny uh, is very frustrated at the end of the day. She's packing and she says she will never be his wife. And this is sort of like, the running common theme in the series. Like as much as I love them, I think they're a great couple when they're great. Certain times I feel like they're 
absolutely toxic when they're not. As soon as they fall into the loop, Jenny goes back to saying, I'll never marry you, or I'll never do this. And she puts pressure on Samit, who can't actually handle pressure or deal with pressure, because he's getting pressure from his family, and he's very bad at making decisions. So you just get like a constant cycle of, I don't know what to do. And then Jenny's like, well, if you don't know what to do, I'm leaving. And then he doesn't know what to do even more. She pressures him into making decisions that suck. So he keeps making little decisions to try and make her happy. One of them has to make a strong decision is what I'm saying. Jenny either has to leave until he's ready to marry her or Summit has to actually commit to marrying her or say, this is what I'm going to do. You either like it or you don't. One of them has to stand their ground. Neither of them is doing so, so they constantly do that. Do you get what I'm saying? Anyway, the next day. So we're going to see an immigration lawyer to find a more permanent solution for me to stay in India. Okay, well, they seem to have calmed down after one day. I think Jenny just needs a Snickers every now and again, or maybe submit Snicker bar. Uh, but they're going to find an immigration lawyer to tell them what they can do so that Jenny can maybe stay in the country a little longer instead of going back to America, because she seemingly thinks India is horrible, apparently, according to her. How much is it? 1,020. Oh, yeah. I hate it here. But she would rather stay here than America. So I don't know what that says about her country, but wow. We are here to ask her some, something like immigration and all. I wonder what the guy wrote down, because he had a pencil in his hand. He's an immigration lawyer and submits like, we're coming here about immigration. And he was like, write that down, write that down. <laughs> Immigration? I thought you guys were here about buying the office. Every six, six months, she have to leave. We want to avoid that. Are you ready to give up the American citizenship? No. I need to draw the line somewhere. Before you draw the line, so Jenny is in a position where she wants to marry Samit, not give up her American citizenship because she's still getting benefits from that country. Stay in India, which she claims to hate, and also wants to marry a man who doesn't want to marry her. I would call that a conflict of interest if ever I've seen one, Jenny. After a certain amount of time, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, holy shit, I'm wrinkly. I don't have much time. I need to actually make decisions that would actually give me my best life. I'm not saying that you're not living it. I'm saying that clearly, if this is your day to day, this is not your best life. Living my best life. I think you could live a little better than this. You have only one technical option. It's called missionary visa. Missionary visa? You need a visa for that? I've been doing that illegally for years. ISKCON is International Society of Krishna Consciousness. You must be heard about the people singing Hare Rama, Hare Krishna in the New York and everywhere. <laughs> you must have heard Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. It's a popular song. You must have heard it in the New York, the San Fraiego. You must have heard it in the Africas. They've been singing Hare Krishna, Hare Rama all day. You know what my favorite song is? Tumbo by Pitbull and that other girl. You know what my second favorite song is? Hare Krishna, Hare Rama. I like Karma by John Legend. It's a good song. I've seen the Hare Krishna people and they're dancing and singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Well, this is something that's pretty far out there for me. Yeah, it must be very hard for you to imagine people dancing, singing, and being happy. Ever since you started living your best life, you've been sad. Jenny is not happy with the idea that she might have to convert or be religious in any way, shape, or form, becoming a Hare Krishna devotee does not seem like something that she wants to do. However, after they uh, sort of convince her just to try it, She's like, let me go to the temple and see if it's for me. I'm gonna leave you to the door of the temple. I have to go in there by myself? I don't want to uh, influence you. You need to feel free to decide by yourself. Says the man who went to an immigration lawyer who said the only way you can stay in the country is by becoming a Hare Krishna devotee. But no, he doesn't want to influence you because that would be too much. Good one, Samit. Are you gonna eat that fat cookies that you just got on the way home? You couldn't just go to the temple, you had to get cookies as well. What are you, the fucking cookie monster? How are you here for the first time? My very first time here. Oh. I'm interested in, um, you know, maybe possibly becoming a devotee. So Jenny actually does take it on board. She's like, let me see what this whole thing's about. And you know, all credit to her. It must be very different, very uh, fish out of water. You might not think that you want to do it, but she's just putting her fears behind her to do this, which I really commend. So there are 108 beats in each round. On every beat, we chant the whole mantra. It really gives you a peaceful feeling. It's also tiring. To my surprise, and I'm sure everyone else's, Jenny takes this on board in a 
very positive way. She's like, I can see how the meditation and chanting helps calm down and my breathing and everything gets a little better. Everything becomes clearer. At the same time, she Americans it and says, well, there's so many beads. I have to do this for so long. How do you feel? I feel like kind of like some sort of vibration or something is going on inside of me or a humming yes. feeling. You need to get that checked out by a doctor. Mm. That sounds like it's some sort of ailment condition. At your age, you better get it checked out by a surgeon. Please. That vibration is the holy name of the Lord. Never mind. Sorry about that. You're doing really well, Jenny. The man that I love, his family is so against our relationship because there is a big age difference. I'm sure you've tried so many things. Try this direction now. Try the spiritual side. Yeah. Okay? Uh, a great turnaround. Jenny seems to be open to the idea and the devotees as well have been very nice in listening to her. They've not judged her. They've been open about her situation and said, all you need to do is have faith in yourself and chant, which is a very, very lovely thing. There are beautiful places in India. I've never been there, but I would love to go and see some of them. I think that Jenny might have like overspoke about India and how she doesn't like it. I think she was just speaking out of pocket. Pray to Krishna and he can change the heart of mother of this guy. The priest not being against Samit and I's relationship is very surprising to me. Sometimes I feel like India is against our whole relationship. Yeah, honestly, uh, they probably are. There's many reasons. White, 60, look like grandma, talk like grandma, act like mommy, but not in that way. It's, it's very easy to judge people on the surface level. Once people actually get to know them as a couple, most people come around and think that they're pretty good for each other. They seem to be a lovely couple, so... It's always good when people don't judge them for their external features. I'm here on a tourist visa and I want to be able to stay in India. Wow, so you're in love with India? Yeah. Not at all. Nope. She actually hates... The, she, remember, remember when she said, I can't stand this place? And then she threw the chair and walked out? Don't lie in the temple. Hopefully, if you get married to this Indian guy, yeah. I think all problem will be resolved automatically. Okay, you may be a devotee and a priest, but you're not a fucking saint. Like, if you get married and you have problems, the problems just don't magically disappear. This is what so many people do with marriage. They're like, oh, we keep fighting. If I just put a ring around her finger, maybe she'll shut the hell up. You guys ever think of resolving the problems and then getting married? Has that ever been an option? I know a lot of people who think marriage is the answer to problems. Marriage is the start of problems if you don't have the answers. If that doesn't happen, is it possible for me to get like maybe a missionary visa? You have to qualify and that takes few years. Some <laughs> may take five years or 10 years because- She doesn't have 10 years. In 10 years, she'll be 10 years older. I thought I was going to say something else. To Jenny's unfortunate demise and non-surprise, she wants to become someone who gets the visa so she could stay in the country. But the priest says sometimes uh, people on their mission takes three, five years, 10 years, 200 years. It could take a lifetime. And that's a very special circumstance. And it means that Jenny's back to square one. She doesn't have a visa. The next day. I don't have my passport because my ex-father-in-law took my passport. Well, that's called stealing. I feel like Samit doesn't understand the laws in life because his in-law has now tried to blackmail him openly, tried to extort him for money, perjury, lying in his name, and now stole his belongings. Gang, 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 fuck, bitch, gang. Samit just seems to think this is normal behavior for anyone who has been part of your family for an extended time. That's not. All of those are crimes that can be uh, punished. People can't steal your stuff. Okay. They said that I'm gonna get it back once I get divorced, but they are now start saying that they don't have it. Okay. Well, again, perjury, stealing, theft, grand theft auto, it's probably stole your car or tick tock tick. What's it called? Rickshaw. Thank you. Tuck tuck. I don't know who, if his like in laws are mafias, but Samit just does not seem to want to fight them on any of this. If someone stole my passport, I would John Wick it back. I cannot believe that he's just letting this one go. You need to take care of that. You need to like be on top of stuff. Samit is finally living on his own, but he has always lived with his parents. And now you're his parent. If you ever wanted to know what their relationship is like or why it even makes sense, there it is. That scene pretty much proves that Jenny's basically his mother. His mother who he finds sexy. Since Samit does not like being in control, he likes being controlled. If you think about it too much way, want to blow your brains out type of love. So Jenny says, listen, I don't care that someone stole your passport. It doesn't mean that you have to stay in the country forever and for your whole life. You can just get a new passport. And he's like, uh -huh. 
let me try that. So they go to the immigration slash passport office. Uh, sir, my passport is open. How long have you lived here? Does this motherfucker look like he's from anywhere else? You just ask how old he is. That's how long he's lived there. I'm here. 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 I'm Jenny feels frustrated because she's like, this could have been done so long ago. And because you didn't take initiative, I had to tell you. And she absolutely suns him. You have got to understand that there are consequences to your actions. You are like Papa! The next day, but now it's night. I'm so excited. My friends are coming. Right, so Samit is meeting his friends. They're finally getting to hang out after a long time. You can see how excited he is by the way he says it. I'm so excited. My friends are coming. I'm so excited. My friends are coming. I'm going to party all night until I die. I'll be shooting and lighting fireworks and jagging off. I'll do everything. So happy. It's really happy, monotone man. Plus, I think everybody's getting married now, right? Having families, having yeah, kids. Yeah, they are getting married one by one. You're the last one left? Yeah, I'm the last one left. I'm not married yet. I know that. Good one, Samit. You walked into that one. You ran into that one, actually. I'm not married yet. <laughs> Jenny looks at him like, yeah, I know. I know. The planets didn't align. Saturn doesn't like it yet. Way to do that one, Samit. You just shot yourself in the foot. But anyway, his friends come over and his friends absolutely love Jenny, which is a lovely, wholesome moment. In fact, they think Jenny is like the best person. It's just in between these little nuggets of cuteness, there's just horrible, horrible ideas, behavior, lies, everything. Sumit is my best friend. And previously I was like, Sumit, why are you staying with this woman? She is very old. But when I get to know her, she is the best person I ever met in my life. That's Bolo. When you find out he has a girlfriend, it's less Bolo. When you find out he's been sliding into Jenny's DMs and she doesn't know how to slide back because she's not operating a phone that doesn't do this. It's very sad, but that's cool. Living apart from your family is a big thing for us. You are just making Jenny happy here. I will give my entire life to convince my parents, but it will gonna cost me my relationship. I do love how in a in 90 Day Fiance they're like, hey guys, listen, this is going out to an American audience. You guys are gonna have to speak English. And then everyone tries, and it's not their mother tongue. So half the words come out a bit janky. I'm not going to do relation with everyone, okay? I'll only like Jenny. My parents' relation, not sexual with it. Yeah, bro, you are doing very bad, and maybe you have to love your family more than even Jenny, unless Jenny is family in backside. You know what I mean? Like, maybe just speak Hindi. It would be fine. We can read subtitles in English. Oh, it doesn't even matter, because they're doing the subtitles Bruh. in English while they're talking in English. Can can you imagine if I was talking and the subtitles going on right now? Why is that happening? Stop. Stop. We cannot set a time frame for it. That after three months or three days or three years, things will be okay. Maybe I will lose my love and my family both. Maybe I will be end up all alone. Maybe you will. And that's the end of a beautiful day with friends. If your day with your friends doesn't end up with you and uh, like a hundred bottles and you saying the words, Maybe I'll just end up alone. Are they really your friends? That's what a good day with friends is. That's just beautiful. Thanks for that positive attitude, Summit. But he's right. One way or another, it's going to cost him. If he stays with his parents, he loses Jenny. If he stays with Jenny, he probably loses out on his parents and family relationships because neither of them are budging. And he is stuck in the middle, which is a very tough position to be in, especially for a man like him. So I don't know what to do, but I'm not him. So <laughs> the day after the one I said before. Yeah, I'm, I'm always constantly hearing your parents like I don't... I understand what they're saying, but still, I know what they're saying. It's been 10 years, Jenny. Can you learn some Hindi? Can you maybe learn, you, you know, if you stay in a country for 10 years, even Samit is talking English in a country that really doesn't need to speak English at all, but he's doing it for you. Can you possibly learn things other than Namaste and Hare Krishna at this point? Ah! 
any sort of family thing, you have to go home for that, and I'm left at home by myself. It does hurt me. Like, as we are talking about going to the functions, uh -oh. there's uh, one more thing is coming where soon she is pregnant. Oh, Summit's brother, whose name is Amit. Like I said, if they had another brother, their name would be Ampit. But Tri is Amit's wife and she's pregnant. So now the family's having a function, but they're not inviting Jenny because they don't see her as family, which sucks. You can have to be a part of that. Yeah, so here we go. I do feel bad, like I can't give your parents a grandchild, but I can love their son and treat him the best way that I can. And that's all you need. I feel for Jenny more and more as I watch this series because her circumstances are pretty much set because of her age. And age is not something you can change. And also love may not be something you can change. The heart wants what the heart wants. Jenny can't have kids at this age, I don't think. You don't necessarily want her to like go out of her comfort zone. Maybe they can adopt kids, but I don't know if that's a thing. And she's probably feeling really let down that not only is she not invited, but Summit's brother and his brother's wife are able to give Summit's parents what they want. Because Jenny just wants to be accepted. And and she can't be. And it's really sad. The other day, not that one, the other one. <laughs> We're at the temple where they're doing a little blessing for the little baby that's going to be had, but the parents are not happy because they said technically Sumit should have the first child because that's how life works. Everyone works on a chronological order. Eldest child should have the first child, youngest child should wait because that's how life works according to these two goobers. I don't even think in society that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what's this gonna be like? We are just going to temple just for the blessings and then we're gonna go pray. Having a baby in an Indian family is a very big deal. Actually, Jenny, and I hate to break this to you, having a, a baby in any family of any religion, race, or creed, or kind is a pretty big deal. I don't know, maybe in white culture they're like, baby, Brandon, Martha. All right. Last year, I canceled the official ring ceremony because of my parents, but then Jenny and I decided to exchange ring without telling them. All right. So he did basically do the vows, and now he didn't tell the parents. So this should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how's you? You reduce some weight. Oh, shit. <laughs> Have you ever heard anybody in life say that? That is the greatest term I think I've ever heard in my life. You reduce some weight. Some people be like, yo, Callie, I don't see you no lose weight. Because I don't lose. You know what I'm saying? All I do is win. That's the most gangster shit I ever heard. Yeah, because I'm happy now. So how's Jenny? Jenny is also good. So then Samit actually takes a stand for his wife, which he does really well, honestly. And all things considered, the fact that his parents are so, so close-minded and he continues to fight without trying to offend them either is commendable. But the dad is not having any of it. Did you see him roll his eyes? As soon as Jenny comes up, he's like, Side eye. Side eye. Jenny, if she wanted to be the part of the celebration, we do not have any issue. She is welcome as a friend of Samit anytime. Then there's an issue right there. Both you Mortal Kombat characters need to understand that she doesn't want to be a friend. If she was just his friend, she wouldn't be down on her knees assuming the position every night. You know what I mean? And she's a granny, so it's really hard for her to do that. This woman has been living for a long time trying to find love, and she's finally found it. She's not willing to get friend zone. She wants that D. Give me your meat right now. People call us. They listen to us. What do they listen to? Why are they listening to your son? The society doesn't accept this relationship. Yeah, but you don't have to accept society not accepting it. Do you understand that? You don't have to accept their expectations of you. You can break out of those. That is how things change. That is how change happens. And if change doesn't occur, everything stays the same and nobody can move forward. Like, I bring this up in every series. I think that the mom is absolutely bonkers at times and doesn't understand that society cannot dictate you. And I say this fully knowing how Indian and, like, Eastern culture works and how big reputation and status is because that's how I grew up as well. But you don't have to conform if you don't want to. I know for the longest time, if I can be like real for a second, I, I'm sure that lots of my family, friends and everything must have said, I don't do anything for a living because I was trying to do YouTube videos and they were like, this guy's gonna fail. Three years later, I'm wearing a kurta in my own room, talking on a mic with a fake dog. Whose life is really bad? <laughs> okay, maybe mine sucks. But anyway, the point is, not everyone has to conform and not everyone's born to conform. There are gonna be people who break the stereotypes and if you're lucky enough to be in the presence of one, maybe you should go along with the journey. We are not able to accept 
Hey, look who I'm engaged to. Damn. Okay, weird time to be doing this. You're sort of steal stealing the thunder of the situation right here. But Samit explains to his parents that he is engaged, and the father's like, Get your ass on. How are you gonna tell mom about this shit? Before taking up any step, parents should be aware of it. Last time when we had this conversation, I was trying to avoid this kind of situation. Yeah, well, last time when we had this conversation, you didn't have this conversation. Do you know what I mean? She's old. You're having a baby. Soon your baby's going to be married before we are. How do you think that's going to look in front of my parents? <laughs> I don't think you're asking too much to have the love of my life and my family both. Oh my god, this man literally turned into an emo in between scenes because of how sad he is. Look at his hair. She's mine! That's not a good look, by the way, dude. Emos don't have beards. And also, of course not. It's not asking too much, buddy. You can have the love of your life and your family, of course. That's not asking too much. That's a great thing. Wednesday. After I get back home, I got a call from my mother and she was really upset. She was just threatening me all around like, if you won't come back, I will make your life hell. Wow. All right, so it's Wednesday and Samit gets a call from his mom who is now black <laughs> blackmailing him as well. And Samit, life revolves around old people and blackmail at this point. If it's not his in-laws blackmailing him, it's his actual family doing so. When your mom says the words, I'm going to make your life living hell, I don't know if that can qualify you as being a good mom at this point. You should be happy if your kids are happy. I personally believe once you have children that you give up a large part of your life in order to make sure that they're happy and, and you don't put yourself before them. Is this is all because of me? It's not you causing anything. We always see this kind of stuff in our house. Why I used to lie a lot because this is something I learned from my own family. Hmm. Well, I guess Samit is now having a therapy session because Jenny is not only his mom, but also his therapist and lover. Any more roles that she could possibly play? If you have three more roles, it's a baker's dozen, Samit. Maybe actually therapy would be good for them because it feels like there's a lot to unpack in his life and his parents might have really done some damage that he has going on moving forward. I've, I do feel for Samit in a lot of ways. My father, he always surrendered in front of my mother and that's what he... It's like, okay, maintain peace, give up in front of your mother. Give up in front of your mother should never be a thing anybody says. Just give up. It's your mother. Just give up. You're never going to win that one. I don't know if that's the thing. Just because she's your mom, it doesn't mean she's always right. And I know mom's always right, but that's not always true. Sometimes you're wrong, mama. Sometimes you're wrong. And the worst was the, one of the biggest loss of my mother. She was very happy with the girl. She helped her in domestic help mm. and stay with my mom. My mom feels very happy. Okay, then why doesn't she marry the girl? I mean, at this point, it seems like the only reason that you were even with the girl is because of the mother. That seems wrong to me. I just feel like if your mom really wants to have help around the kitchen, she could get a helper, not someone that she wants you to marry. So then Samit breaks out some really, really rough information that I didn't know happened in their family and it sort of maybe gives some background into why sometimes some of the things are said. I do had a, a younger sister, one and a half year younger to me. She died because of jaundice. This explained the way uh, my mother blamed me for losing another daughter when I get divorced. That's probably one of the most stretchiest, th that's Play-Doh type stretchy at this point. It's very sad what happened to Samit's younger sister, but it's even sadder if a mom can blame you for getting an arranged marriage and then getting a divorce and saying that could have been my daughter. Sometimes it feels like my mother is taking revenge. She is mad at me because she's not happy. She lost a girl she had connection with. This sounds like she swiped right on Tinder, had a good date, and then nothing came of it. And she blamed you because you gave us some advice on what to wear and it didn't work out. I think therapy is needed at this point. Don't you think your mother needs help? She needs some she sort does. of professional help. She doesn't know how to control her anger, and she just goes off. Says the woman at the start of the episode, who literally had a meltdown at this man, threw a chair, and then cussed him out. It's always good when it's coming from someone who does the exact same thing. But she's not wrong. They do need therapy. And she suggests therapy, which is the American thing to do. And I'm not even mad at it. I think it's a fantastic idea. I don't know if Samit's mom and dad are going to even consider the idea, but I pr it probably is the right one. One serious day later. I'm hoping that the counselor will help have a healthy conversation. I guess the stars must have aligned. They get Samit's parents to agree to a counseling session, which I didn't think that would be 
a thing because in India and in Eastern culture, it's seen as a very big sign of weakness. But for whatever reason, uh, the parents are like, yeah, that seems like a good idea. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Like, well, seriously, she's had kids. The kids are probably older than him. I think they are. I don't know how you're supposed to digest that, but that's that's gangster. You should be proud of him. I'm sure in the 1.3 billion people in the country, someone has married someone double their age. I'm sure it's not that uncommon that 1.3 billion people are like, not, not for me, oh my god, no. I'll marry someone underage, I'll also arrange marriage, I'll do anything else but old women. I don't think that's the case. After some time, five years or ten years, if your relationship is over, Probably in the grave, bro. If you talk about five to ten years, I think six feet under will be the correct assessment. Do you understand that? I think what they are saying is, if we are not together, what do you think what you will do? After you, I don't need anybody else. So, Abraham, look. Oh my god, it's not funny. Jenny says the most romantic thing. She's like, after Submit, there is no more. He is the love of my life. And without batting an eye, Submit's mom says, then why don't you be alone right now? It's such a ruthless statement that you can see the dad, Anil, laughing. This dude is trying to hold in his laughter. See, ek dusre ki sunenge hi nahi. To na aapka pyaar in tak pahunchega. Main ye nahi kehti hu ki aapka dukh chota hai. Ek cheez ki wajah se hum pura rishta hi aisa kar de. To aap inke upar bhi thoda kuch chhod dijiye na ek baar. So, the marriage counselor says in the nicest way and I can see what she's doing. She's being open enough to make people feel heard. She's like, listen, I understand your concern. She's an old fruitcake. Sure, she's a pruny lady. But Samit is happy and he is your son. And would you really like to ruin your whole relationship with your son over one prune? No. Maybe you should just let him see how it goes. Maybe reserve your judgments for a little while and see if you feel good. In a crazy twist of events, instead of Samit's mom saying, no, this is bullshit, she's like, listen, if Jenny can be a good Indian daughter-in-law, then maybe I'll change my mind. And it seems like there's a compromise because she's not saying no and just being closed-minded. So I think we're getting somewhere. She gonna shift to our house along with the father. She gonna shapeshift into our house with our father who is going to shapeshift into a tree. No, I'm kidding, but they're moving to our house now. Shift to our house. Why she's gonna come and live with us if we're not married? Just to check that we are, whether we are living together good or not, whether you know the Indian culture or not, just teach you a little bit. So yes, uh, Samit's mom is coming with a pretense to teach Jenny, which is not gonna sit well with Jenny at all because she's past the age of learning. She's 60 something, she's retired. She just wants to sit and love her own life. I don't think this is going to go well at all, but it's a compromise. You're mad at something or what? Oh, I'm confused. What I'm thinking she's up to is I'm going to come and make Jenny's life hell and then Jenny will run out of India so fast and I'll get my son back. If you didn't manage to run her out 10 years time, she's not running you off the line, okay? You're going to still be there. Jenny's still going to be haunting Summit in his dreams when she's done and he's like, you know, with another woman. I'm done with all this crap. <laughs> you, Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. It's gonna be an old prudy ghost lady. Submit, you sealed your fate for life. How you expect so much from me and you keep avoiding marrying me? I'm doing everything, baby. What else you avoid? Only the thing I'm avoiding marriage. I'm doing everything, baby. I did everything except marry you. The one thing that you want is the one thing I'm not doing. I'm doing everything else. I don't think she asked for anything else. I don't think he's working or anything. I don't think she asked for much. She just wants to be married. And he's like, I'm everything you want I'm doing, which is nothing. <laughs> Apparently they chose to have this conversation in a Planet of the Apes prequel, Monkey Island. I don't know why this is the place they chose, but the monkeys start getting aggressive and submits like, let's get out of here. Okay, you wanna go? <laughs> he looked at me. Yes. <laughs> Out of here. Nothing will happen. Come. One monkey scale later. Hi, Dipali. Hi, Jenny. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I miss you. So then the next day, Jenny meets her like one true friend in the country, which is really, really sweet. Jenny needs female friends and she's a lovely person. This is um, Samit's brother's sister's sister. 
India type things, man. My cousin's sister's brother, auntie, uncle, friend, auntus, quantus, cousin, junior. That's his name. Dipali is my best female friend in India. Actually, she's my only female friend in India. That was sad. You didn't need to say that second part. You know what I mean? Like when people say the words like, this is my best pair of underwear. Great. Then you follow it up with, this is my only pair of underwear. It's the most disgusting thing I ever heard in my life at that point. I support Jenny and Sumit like more than 100%, 200%, 1000%. They are such a wonderful couple. It must feel nice that in the wake of so many people apparently disagreeing with their relationship, everyone who's met them has approved of their relationship. It must feel nice to know that you're doing something right. And I hope that these two take that on board and understand that their relationship must be doing something good if everyone can be changed with their initial like thoughts of, oh, what are you guys doing? To, oh, these guys are a great couple. Again, when you really think about it, it's a 30 year old Indian man who has like an older woman mom fetish sort of thing and an old woman who got catfished by someone half her age and won't commit. So when you really think about it, it's horrible. But if you don't, it's beautiful. But I wouldn't say that uh, uh, Sumit's mother is wrong because there's a huge generation gap. Bro, this is like the steam era. She's the coal era. They didn't even have lights when she was around. Tesla and shit, like, you know, the actual, not the car, like Nikola Tesla and shit existed when she did. She wants to come and live with us in our house. I'm not a young Indian girl, so I don't need someone to come and train me how to do things in my house. We have joint families in India. We still have to remember that I am still an American. But Jenny, this is India. Yeah, but we this is India, Jenny. Yeah, listen, we do have to remember that you're an American. I'm an American. But you're not in America. Land this is the classic thing that Americans do. They're like, well, in America, we do this this way, okay? You take your shotgun out and you say hello. Well, in India, we don't even have that shit. Maybe if you're wearing the sari and you look down and you're like, oh, I'm not in the country, I should abide by the rules. This is the chance you've been waiting for. I think you should be positive about it. Does she really mean it? Or is she just saying it? Or is she just trying to run me out of India? Oh, you're overthinking. Oh my God, you're way too old to be overthinking. This is like high school stuff. Just do the thing. Just do it well. If you do something well, everyone's impressed. One good friend later. Me and Sumit did decide that a good compromise would be to have his family come and stay with us for just a couple of days. Oh, damn. They said that they were going to stay a couple months. She's like, hey, here's a compromise. Two days. After two days, I'm kicking those bitches out. So Jenny seems to get her way with Sumit, just like how <laughs> Sumit's mom gets her way with Sumit's father. It seems to be a common occurrence in the family. I don't know if either of them have noticed that. I actually living away from parents. It's sometime I miss them, like most of the time. <gasps> <laughs> Actually, uh, living away from my parents, sometimes I miss them. Actually, most, all the time. Cry every night. I don't know what to do. I'm with Jenny. She's so stupid. <laughs> I like it so much. I miss them. But you're all right. You're okay. I don't mind you. <laughs> he really misses his parents because they do everything for him. He's such a mama's boy. That's why he married a mama. Like, I live in a completely different country than my whole entire everyone. You can go visit your parents at any time. But what anytime. does it mean that I should not allow to miss my parents? You can miss your so parents. All you want to do is stand here and argue and fight with me. Yep. Yeah, so uh, Jenny and Sumit stop fighting about parents. Me Meanwhile, the parents are on the way, so they gotta clean their act up real fast. Namaste. 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 Good, good. Well done. Very good. Jenny learnt one word in 10 years. The parents come and she's like, Namaste. Please, Nama, stay at our house. <laughs> you said that would be funny. It's a happy moment for you guys to be here. <laughs> this shows all of our marks of our drinks. Okay, well, so Sumit's mom came with an agenda. Clearly, she's trying to give Jenny a run for her money. But I think this is just most moms. Like, if you come to, you know, a house, then they'll start, like, picking apart your stuff. Maybe it's just a brown thing. You get to a point when once too much is too much. If it was my house, I'd be like, all right, get out. Why is there a dumbbell in the kitchen? In between pouring flour, are you like, oh, let me bench press that flour next time. Why is there a dumbbell there? Normally, I would say if it's your house, your rules, but my God, Jenny, you don't work. You're just staying there the whole day. Can you at least clean the goddamn kitchen? She's going through my kitchen and finding every single thing wrong, checking every corner, moving my stuff around, making me clean and sweep. Making me clean and sweep? 
I like my house dirty. I like spiders living there saying, Jenny, we love this house. We can have babies here and you don't do anything but it. I like my house as dirty as some meat. If you knew they were coming, by the way, you could have done this beforehand. Just saying. Pure ghar ki safai, pure ghar ka maintain rakna, ye hamara daily ka kaam hai. Ek seekhne ki umre hoti hai. Wo bhi dhal chuki hai uski. Nei kar paayegi kuch bhi. So Samit's mom basically says that Jenny doesn't have any hope because she's like too old to learn how to do new things. You can't teach an old dog new tricks and can't teach an old bitch new dicks. I don't think that's a saying. But anyway, the point is Jenny has not cleaned the house and things are not looking good. And I don't think this is going to go too well. I'm happy to see the way the house is getting clean. My mom is asking her to do a better than uh, whatever she's doing. So I like it. Samit is happy that she's cleaning the house and it's probably like he's in euphoria at this point. He's got two moms basically. This is always what he wanted. <sighs> Jenny, you have to do this. Jenny. Ah, what? She's saying don't worry. Daily. This is what in the most disrespectful way ever, the mom kicks something and is like, Jenny, pick it up. Pooja, what is this behavior? It's a very, very tough scene because uh, Jenny is being put to work. I just don't think this is like right for me. I don't want to do it. I want to go home. Like, I can't take the pressure of it. But don't you think any job interview... I will say on both sides. On one side, uh, it's almost manic, the way that brown moms try and clean the house every day as if there's guests coming over every second of every day. I've never understood that. Once a week will do. Thank you very much. Everyone has things to do in life besides clean a house. Uh, and secondly, if you don't clean a house after a week, it's going to look like that. So Jenny, can you please not treat this like this is Fallout 4 and you're in an apocalypse? Maybe you could put stuff away since you're there every single day of the week. It wouldn't kill you. So I can see both sides of this. I can also see submits fat tummy so i don't know who's been feeding him but this man needs to use that one dumbbell in the gym dinner time i assume so jenny's not a good cook but um submits mom is like yo let me show you how real indians do this shit. and she brings out all the spices i'm pretty sure jenny thinks those are different colors of cinnamon shapes and colors the likes of which i've never seen i would assume or hope that in the 10 years that she's lived in this country she would figure it out but it doesn't seem that she has <laughs> she know everything she's nervous that's not even a bad thing for a mom to do at this point. I think that's kind of bolo. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, it's a little condescending, but at the same time, ideally you'd like a partner who could cook. I know I would. I'm a good chef, but I'd like my partner to also be a good chef. So sometimes I could just sit down and be like, you Gordon Ramsay it for a minute. I get to scream. If you can't cook a uh, fucking muscle, you, a fucking yeah. Yeah. Uh. Uh. A good thing is that my mom uh, don't speak English and Jenny don't understand Hindi. So I think probably this is the best thing. They both cannot understand each other. Samit then says, you know, he's really glad that his wife can't understand his mom and his mom can't understand his wife because if they could, all hell would break loose. That is pretty telling about their relationship and how bad it is, but all right. Every time he smiles, you know there's some like evil stuff happening. <laughs> I don't know. So this scene is probably unintentionally one of the most funny scenes in 90 Day Fiance, I think. Jenny cannot understand what Samit's mom is saying, and she's saying it with such a smile that you'd think that she's saying nice things. Because it's in Hindi, Jenny doesn't understand it. Jenny's like, yeah, yeah, no, I get it. She doesn't. And she just starts agreeing, even though the mom is absolutely like ripping her a new one. <laughs> Oh, you. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're useless. No, no, no. You're useless. That's what it would translate to if Jenny could understand, but wow. That's the funniest shit I've seen in a minute. <laughs> To my surprise, the vibe that I'm getting from Samit's mom right now is actually very positive, and I think that we could actually be friends again. Oh, when you watch this back, Jenny, you're not gonna think the same. <laughs> and she looks at 90 Day Fiance and she's turning it on, and she's like, That bitch, that's what she was saying? Let's watch the moment where Jenny gained some hope about her and Samit's future. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was. I was paying attention. How, how did she know this? Uh, she didn't understand Hindi the whole time. This lady sits down, she's like, starts speaking in Hindi. Jenny's like, yeah, 
No, I don't. I get it fully. I understood this whole thing. I was good in the kitchen, bitch. That's wild. Oh my god, he's got the Leonardo DiCaprio hair now. Samit's like a fashion icon, Loki. Every now and again, like his hair changes into like styles of things that you would not believe an Indian man could pull off, let alone a man at that age. But this guy does it. Why? Daddy lagriya. Sumit grandmother. I am not old enough to be his grandmother. I'm old enough to be his mother, not his grandmother, okay? That's not much better than that's your husband. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not his grandmom. I'm old enough to be his mom. Maybe a great aunt. Not a grandmom. Definitely a mom. That's that's well within bounds. Pretty much am his mom, actually. It's my house. We're not gonna do this in my house. So then uh, Jenny wipes her nose and apparently she puts it in the plate. I, I don't, I've never seen someone put a booger in a plate before. That's disgusting in any culture, but you know what? I sort of also side with Jenny a little bit. I can see that the mom is being overbearing. She wants her house to be run like the way that she runs her own house. And Jenny doesn't like that. And you know, it's not... Submit's so mom's house. So in some regard, I get it. But at the same time, Jenny has left this house completely unhinged. She's at home all day. The house is somehow not clean. I guess the worst part about it is she's not really willing to learn after 10 years how to make Indian food in India. I don't know. Both of them are wrong at the same time. When it comes down to it, he better choose me or them. And that's it. There's no, I'm not living with his parents. So Jenny then says this is an ultimatum. Honestly, she should have took Summit and been on the show, the ultimatum. That show would have been a hundred times better if these two were on it. But anyway, she's like, it's either me or them. We can't both live in this house. A while back, they said that they were going to stay for a few months. And then Jenny somehow haggled that down to like one day. And then now Samit is saying like one day is not enough to teach Jenny India. She watched Slumdog Millionaire. She's still trying to get over that movie. She needs more time in order to be able to do this. So they stay for four days now. And now they're teaching her the ways. Sort of like a, a movie. Indians teaching white people. It's like anti-Hollywood almost. <laughs> You were not explaining things with love. You were being condescending. I was explaining things with love. I was saying she's useless with love. Like this. You're useless. Not like, you're useless, you know? It's way different. I actually happen to like my kitchen the way I had it. Nobody likes that kitchen the way you had it. Are you kidding me? If Gordon Ramsay came in there, he would die of a heart attack from seeing that. Probably the same day, but not the same year. So the next day, Jenny is sick from diarrhea and vomiting. Also, dude, you don't have to tell people someone has diarrhea. If you say they're sick, I think, you know, you're not the doctor. You don't have to do it. Her is open. She's depositing things like a check. Please stop, submit, please. I believed you the first time. Uh, but yesterday things didn't go well as we planned. And top of that, at the middle of the night, the Jenny got diarrhea and she got a vomiting. All right, bro, you've now said this in two languages. One was enough. When you say someone's sick, you know, she had a running tummy would be not she painted the toilet with her butt. Like, that's not... Don't do that, you know. Ye respect hai. Hum log aayen, tum sorry ho. Aram se. Hum logo ko agar teen, char, paanch bhi ho jata hai na, tab bhi hum thik rehte hain. Kuch nahi, sara kaam samalte apna. Why are we, why are we doing this? What is, why are we, why are we talking about how much diarrhea? Is this a flex? Am I really listening to two women flex over who can have more diarrhea and be okay right now? If I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cases of diarrhea, I'm fine. It's every day, bro, with the diarrhea. I just never heard anyone flex about having so much diarrhea before. This is new to me. So Samit's mom is like, we're going to wake Jenny up, which is, you know, I think this is beyond crossing the line. If you're sick, you're sick. There's nothing you can do about it. You need to rest. I don't know if they don't believe Jenny, but I really don't want to find out if she's been lying or not. My mother is expecting Jenny to follow the uh, traditional morning routine. If Jenny cannot get up off the bed, it really look bad. I mean, Jenny is not doing this every day. It's not like every day she goes to bed and gets sick. <laughs> And if she does, she needs like really bad medical attention at this point. So I feel like in the four days, she'll probably get better. They just need to give her a little time to rest. But they're not doing that. They go straight to her room and wake her up, which I find kind of sad. Hi. Do feel good. I don't know. They are saying that you don't look sick. They are like 
You look great. Which is unintentionally very sweet because I thought she looked absolutely terrible. They're like, you look normal. Actually, that's really mean now that I think about that. That's very mean. Hello, cello. Can I take a bath? Maybe I'll feel better. Okay, okay. Sub Nantak. So Samit's mom's like, she's being disrespectful. Jenny's like, she's being disrespectful. You. Oh, you. 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 <laughs> Samit himself is like, mom, two hours ago when she stood up, her pants were brown. And that's not the color it was when I bought it for her. So she's being respectful. Samit is trying to plead his case. He's always on his wife's side and it's pretty commendable. Oh, joining us for yoga? Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, Jenny. But now it's time for Jenny to really be put through the ring of fire. The parents are gonna teach her how to be more Indian. The first thing they do is do their morning like yoga slash stretching. I didn't know these guys could stretch the way they did, but I gotta start stretching because they are the most flexible old people I've seen. Never thought I'd say that in a context of just niceness and not that. I'm very impressed with his parents. They're so flexible and my body doesn't want to do that. Damn, I don't even know if I could do that now. Nah, I can't. But like, not like that. Nah, I can't. But like, if I was 60, I don't think I'd be able to do that. Nah, I could. As usual, Samit's mom ruins it by saying, I'm way better at yoga. Which, of course, you are. You used to be a yoga instructor. It's like saying Jenny's way better than you at English. True, she used to and always was an English speaker. Some things she'll be better at than you. One planet later. So now the planetarium guy, sorry, the astrologer has come back. He's ready. He's read the planets and he's ready to read Samit's future. Hello. Hi, hello, how are you? So they start like spilling the tea to the planet man. They're like, yo, Jenny can't do anything. She can't do yoga. She could barely clean. She's so white. And then the planet guy is like, bro, I've been looking at Uranus for a long time. Uranus, I think is how we... You, uh, <laughs> oh, you can say yeah. Uranus until you're like eight. <laughs> Oh, planet guy for the win. It took literal planets for someone to stand up for Samit and Jenny. You gotta pray to Saturn every now and again. Jenny ko se shadi karna chahta hai. Shadi ka matlab yehi hota hai na ki bache paida karna, uske achhi life bitana. Inki ho rhi hai, apki ho rhi hai, apki ho rhi na? Oh, man, this guy been looking at planets for a long time. Apparently, he fully straight up eviscerates Samit's mom by saying, "Is this?" Is this your marriage? Whose son is that? Yours or is that your husband? This guy has the whole solar system on his side. He can say whatever he wants. He's a star. Well, who cares about a stupid star? Gee, Patrick, it seems like you would care a lot about stupid stars, considering you are one. It's written in the book. The stars will do it. Let's see. Now, Mao, how is Mao? Swarthi Mao, you feel like that. Honestly, I need to stop becoming a planetologist, a planetarium, a plant, whatever. I gotta get a telescope so I can get a backbone. This is what you needed. You didn't need a psychologist, a therapist, a marriage counselor. You don't need none of that. You need a dude who looks at Saturn every now and again. This is God's wish. This is the first time somebody is looking into my parents' face and telling them what is right for everyone. It's kind of happy and sad. Like, it's kind of sad that I think Samit's been trying to say this and he couldn't really stand up to his parents in the way that he wanted to. And it's also sad that a guy who breeds planets was the first and only person to do so. But at the same time, I'm happy somebody's doing it. Whether it's a planet dude or your Uber driver. I don't know if they're going to take this to heart, but at least he was doing it. It's been very nice. I've enjoyed having you. So the next day, Jenny says goodbye because Samit's parents are like, yeah, we're going home. We've done all we could. I understand a lot. I want to say this. And your nature is good. It's very good. So, okay. Whatever you've written, it's going to happen. Whatever it is. Did the astrologer, like, poison everyone? What is happening? One conversation from Starman over there, and she goes from, I'm never accepting Jenny or the marriage, to, you're a pretty good-natured person, and you probably make a pretty good partner to my son. That's all it took. No, Jenny, no. Jenny? Jenny? Jenny, we will love you so much. We love you so much. We love you so much. <laughs> you think that this is supposed to be like a happy moment because they're playing that piano that's like, mm, we should be happy. 
But this is a very sad moment because like the fact that Jenny's been wanting acceptance for so long and the minute she gets it, she just goes in for a hug instead of being angry or any other emotion other than that should very much signify the fact that she loves Samit is like the most evident thing about her. Despite the parents treating her pretty badly and being pretty crappy to her, the first sign of them accepting their relationship, she doesn't do anything other than hug them. It shows her character. <laughs> This is a dream. Like, this is my dream. I can't no, even it's believe not dream. this is happening. No, no, it's not dream. It's reality. Ever, ever since that guy, Starman, tell me that you are good, I believe. Because I believe in stars. And you, Jenny, are a star. I'm a star! Thank you so much for finally just accepting us. Can Smit and I marry? Dekhte. Dekhte. Kya hota? All right. Well, that lasted a whole five seconds. It was it was going so well. She had to ask. Lojay ji ne mere ko bola hai. Agar tum jada piche padoge, to ye isse chhodega nahi bilkul bhi. To maine soch liya ki main chhod diya maine usko. Samit's mom said the astrologer said if she pushes Jenny too much, she will never leave. So Samit's mom was like, let me do a reverse psychology, make her try and stay. So real talk, she'll leave. Gotcha, bitch. I knew this wasn't actually a change of heart. This is just Samit's mom trying a new plan. Oh my God. We are not going to stop you. I'm not going to support you. I understand. I do, but don't worry. Everything will be fine. The day ends with Jenny actually being more okay than I thought about the parents saying, we're not going to support you but we don't hate you now either so it's sort of reached an impasse stage where whatever happens happens and we now reach conch shell day what is conch shell day take a listen Yep, that's Khan Shell Day. Today is the first day before Holi, or we call it Chori Holi. Today we burn a fire and it represents new start for everything. I wish I could live in a country where I could just take some sticks, light a fire, and they're like, oh, you're doing prayers? Nope, that's cold. Damn, I can't do that where I am. If I even look at a stick the wrong way, they're like, arsonist. Celebrating Holi with Jenny and with my parents together, it's a, such a perfect moment. Whee! This is our third holy together. Yeah, this is the best one. So, um, Samit and Jenny, after the prayer, have their little holy celebration. It's kind of sweet and holy-some. <laughs> Apparently, it's their third holy together. So, they've done this before, and I keep forgetting that they've been at a relationship for a very long time. Jenny started when she was 50 in the relationship, and Samit started when he was not 50. Uh, was he 20? I don't know. So now, we can marry... Yeah. There's nothing in the way of Jenny and Samit getting married at this point, which is crazy because for the longest time, for three whole seasons, the big barrier between everything, the end goal is them getting married and the fact that they couldn't because of Samit's parents. There's nothing holding them back, which is a problem for Samit. Yeah. He's been so used to his parents saying no. He'd been so used to other people making the decisions. Now that there's no issues, he's having issues. I never thought I'd get this far. Are you ready? Like, when are you ready? How soon yeah, do you when you will start so want us to get married. If the astrologer says, you guys are free to go to court and marry tomorrow. You want to go get married tomorrow? Or? Damn. So Jenny's like, hey, why don't we get married tomorrow? She even says, listen, if Starman says we get married, we get married. Because that dude dictates our life. And Samit is just not happy about that. I want to get married, but not like, okay, tomorrow. Let's, let's get married tomorrow. How soon? I don't know. Like, it's maybe a... I don't know. Good answer, Samit. How soon do you want to get married? I don't know. Maybe it's like, I don't know. Maybe. What? What date do you want to get married? Don't, don't worry about it. Maybe. Maybe not. Thursday. We're just here just to find out if it's okay for us to marry. This is the lunar system of astrology. We have seasonal changes because of the Earth's rotation. You didn't need a computer to tell me that the Earth moves around. I knew that one. I'm pretty sure that I don't have to be a scientist to know that. <laughs> Thank you, Starman. Since many, many years, there have been a lot of hurdles, whatever they have been doing. But the moon is changing rapidly. You can get married, no big deal. Oh, shit, okay. Well, sort of anticlimactic almost. The moon is changing rapidly. Soon it'll be a sun. Uh, no big deal, you guys can get married. It's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> Did you hear that slap? God, <laughs> damn, this sounds like a piece of meat. 
Oh my god, it's very quickly, it's happening very quickly. He gave us the green light to go ahead and get married, yay! Submit doesn't look too happy. Jenny's like, you know Jenny's happy when she starts talking like a teenager and she's 60. And as you can see, Submit is cosplaying as Elvis, one and two. Not as happy as he should be, because he's like, yay. But he has a reason for why he doesn't want to get married. I'm not pressuring you, right? I love you, I know you love me. But I feel like I'm nervous, because sometimes you do get mad. And you do say that I'm going back to America, I'm not gonna live with you. So, Summit basically says that, you know, his last marriage, which ended in divorce, was a very complicated affair. Lots of money had to be given. He got blackmailed excessively. And he's scared that he's going to go through this again. I would say get a prenup. I don't know if they have that in India. But if they don't, then I can see why he's a little bit scared. However, Jenny definitely is not like the other girl. So I don't think you should be as scared. I understand what Samit is saying. I understand him being scared. I don't think it's the same thing. I know how traumatic Samit's first marriage and divorce was, but we are still getting married after nine days and he needs to know that. Right, well, that's <laughs> that seems like a good compromise. I, I completely understand how Samit is feeling, but in nine days, he needs to get over that shit so I can get a ring on my finger. Because if I don't, <laughs> then my finger's going up his butt. So it's finally the big day. They're getting married. They're signing the certificate as, you know, the most romantic thing you could ever do in a marriage, sign stuff, and they're married. Except they're not, because Summit does some shady shit. Because it wouldn't be Summit and Jenny without Summit doing something and then not telling people. Him lying and then not facing his repercussions is like a staple of the show at this point. His friend calls him from Dubai and is like, hey, I want to check in on you and Jenny. And he tells him the truth. My parents are showing few signs of positivity. That's a great news. When are you getting married? What happened? You're making faces, bro. Uh <laughs> This dude is my favorite dude. Why are you making faces, bro? What are you, an animated movie for DreamWorks? Indian up? But you said I'm a bit scared of marriage, man. Scared of what? Maybe the past experience of marriage, like my divorce, all the fighting, it'll cost a lot of money. Maybe it's natural that you have these fears before you get married, but I think after 10 years, when someone moves to your country and constantly is on your side, I think you're okay. Every person has their own merit and value, and very clearly, Jenny is for this man. And very clearly, he is for her. I don't want to spoil the moment. Like, I feel like when people get married, people change. Marriage is what you guys are living already together. So just do it. So Submit is basically like, hey, I'm content. I got two phones. I got my parents on one, Jenny on the other. Things are going well for me. And this Dubai friend is like, dude, real talk, you've been married this whole time. The only difference is she doesn't have a ring on her finger. It's time to actually do the one thing that she's been asking for. Give her that, bro. She deserves it. What a good friend this guy is. Is there anything you're not telling me? Well, we fill up the form for the marriage. He said, no problem. I can file it right now. When we're done with the meeting at night, I ask him to hold. Don't file for the marriage. Dubai bro asks, hey, you're being a little shady like Slum. What's up? You sussy baka. He confesses in classic Summit fashion. Instead of telling the marriage lawyer to submit the paperwork so that they could get married, he asked the lawyer that night when Jenny was out the house or something to hold the papers for right now. And he didn't tell her. So this is not going to go down well. I don't know. Jenny know about it? No, he don't know about it. Well, you again, you know, doing something wrong. That will break her trust. You just... Being a jerk. <laughs> Dubai bro is my favorite, man. You are just being a jerk, bro. I have to go back to Dubai. Everything good there. So yeah, the friend sets him straight and says, you're being a jerk. You need to tell Jenny, stop breaking a trust. Absolutely true. One lie later. A few days ago, my brother Ahmed and his wife Shri had a baby. So yeah, Sumit is now an uncle. Congratulations. Things are going great. And this time they're doing another ceremony. Is Jenny invited? Because last time she wasn't. So it's just family only, not outsiders? They just accepted us as a couple. Things take time. I asked my parents if Jenny can come, but they said not now, maybe sometime later. So Samit again asked his parents. He said now that you guys are all buddy buddy, can Jenny come? And they said not now, maybe later. I don't know if the baby can get reborn. I'm not sure how that works. So there, there won't be a later, but uh, I guess still there's not as many changes as we thought. I thought they would accept her but sadly not there's something i need to tell you after filing that marriage application you know i was a bit nervous i asked him to put it on a hold why would you do that because he submit because he lies a lot because he doesn't know how to accept truth because he's not someone who stands up for things this is the man you chose i don't know what to tell you i was nervous 
you should support me by understanding the reason. How about supporting me? I have been through hell and back, man, especially, you know, learning that you were already married and everything. You know what? Amen, Jenny. Amen. I don't have any disagreement with that at all. Submit's like, you should understand me being scared. Jenny's like, I've been with you through everything. What about what I want? And she says it in a nice manner because at the start of the series, at the start of this season, she threw the chair. She was very, very much losing her marbles. You guys have officially made me lose my marbles! This is a nightmare! This time she speaks to him in a nice manner, still explaining her needs. It's not fair to keep me hanging by a thin thread here. So I guess I'll be going back to America now. And it's ruined. It's ruined. It's absolutely ruined. I was so happy for her. And she then went to the guilt trapping manipulation. I mean, I understand, you know, if she actually was going back to America, then I'd say that's putting her foot down. But I know for a fact she's not doing this. She's just doing this to scare him into actually making a decision. You don't want to marry me. Absolutely, 100%. You do not want to marry me. Man, even I cannot think about when I'm going to go and how I'm going to do the things. Yeah, what the fuck does that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? I don't even know what that means. I don't know how I got to do the things that I want to do to you. I feel like even Submit just sometimes when he's like backed into a corner, he's like, shit, I'm gonna make no sense. I gotta be good, but good, 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 Oh, she's still here. Okay, fine, I'll marry you. Thursday still. In a moment of clarity, Jenny, instead of sitting at home feeling bad, decides to go back to the ESCOM temple where she first became a Hare Krishna devotee. And she meets her friends there. Hare Krishna, Jenny. Any changes since we last talked? So many. We started the application process. And then it turns out that Smit called the lawyer and told him to stop. And wait, he's not quite ready yet. So Jenny dishes the tea out to her new friend. And she's like, Smit, he's back up to his old tricks. And she speaks with the best clarity that she has as well. These people at the temple here are like the realest people for Jenny. He keeps saying, I'll handle it. Just be calm. Don't worry. I'll handle I'm gonna handle it. His way of handling it is not doing anything. <laughs> Right? Yeah, no, she wasn't even joking, Jenny. She was just trying to understand the situation. But it's true. Samit's way of handling things is to not handle things. I mean, she's a Hare Krishna devotee, therapist, probably a lawyer at this point. She's the man. There's no stability. There's no commitment. What kind of relationship is that? I think he likes things the way that they are. Yes. We're not married, but we're as a married couple. Yes. That's exactly right. He's getting all the perks without any of the responsible. That's exactly what it is. And sometimes you need to make people responsible so that they can be more involved mature about situations. When people know what they have to lose, maybe they won't take it for granted. Maybe just go back, back to the US. Let him feel how important you are for him. Let him miss me. Man, this goal is exactly. You gotta go back to the States. You gotta let someone feel them miss you. And to think of just leaving him, it's really hard. I, I, say, I say I'm going to, but when it comes down to it, I can't do it. You actually need to commit to the thing that you say you're gonna do. If you say that you're gonna leave, you better leave so he can actually think, oh my God, she's serious this time. I'm not gonna just stay and be comfortable and think everything will be okay. Because deep down, Summit is like, every time Jenny says she's going or says this or that, she might come back. She'll probably get over it. She's just over dramatic. The minute he doesn't know or he's uncertain or you shake the platform that he's so comfortable on, maybe he'll start clinging on for dear life. Maybe. Monday. Whoop. We're in a time loop. Jenny and I haven't talked since I told Jenny that I stopped the marriage application. Isn't that just so typical of men? As soon as the girl leaves, you start benching. He went back to his kitchen. He started lifting weights. He's like, I'm going to show Jenny that I am a tough guy. I feel maybe you feel insecure and I don't want that. It means you are losing hope. You are me losing trust. I will marry you because I want to. I want to be with you. I don't want to lose you. So submit after possibly two hours of leaving Jenny and not talking to her and lifting maybe two reps of weight realizes he can't do this. He doesn't want her to mistrust him and he wants to marry her. All it took was two hours. He then calls the uh, marriage person and is like, yo, send the certificates through. We're getting married. Hello. Hi. hi. Uh, I remember I called you and asked you to put that marriage application on hold. So now I yes. want to resume that. Like I want to start the process. You sure? You're not going to call me later, are you? And say no? Because you keep doing that. Okay, I am clicking on it right now. It has been submitted. It is being processed. <laughs> it's like that I was just fearing for, for nothing. Yeah. 
And Samit is unwaveringly happy. He's very, very happy that he's getting married. Everyone click the button. The marriage is happening. And finally, it's the wedding day. Wednesday. Yes, the same Wednesday from before. I'm going to go meet Dipali and we're going to have Mahindi done. And I'm going to meet Shantanu today. Okay. Uh, we are going to buy the cow. Cow? Yeah, the same one that shit in the house, remember? At the start, we need two things in India, stars and a cow. My friend Polly has organized a henna party for me. Normally during Mehndi, there would be a lot of women singing songs and applying Mehndi on each other's hands, but now only Jenny and I are here. And Fully threw Jenny under the bus again. She's like, normally it's a big party, everyone's happy. It's just me and the lady. Woo! <laughs> but it's cool, it's fun, it's intimate. That's a good way of putting it. It's intimate, it's nice. But, you know, we're too, we're... We're choosing not to tell them, though, until after we're married. What? Really? Never mind. Jenny decides to confess to her friend that they're not going to tell Samit's parents that they're married until after they get married. It's like you guys want to have problems at this point. I think they should know. Like, not inviting is okay. Like, they will understand. But not telling them, I don't think it's right. Yeah, I agree. You know what you could have done? And if I was Samit, what I would have done? I would have called up my parents and been like, Hey, yo, I'm getting married to the white lady. If you want to know where we're having this ceremony, it's 123 India Boulevard. Lie. There's no one. 3 India Boulevard, what the hell is that? Then they're gonna turn up to a place that doesn't exist. They can't stop the marriage even if they want to. Submit, you don't need an astrologer or a cow. All you need is me. I'm a marriage planner. Look like somewhere's king. <laughs> Samit saying the words, I look like a king of somewhere, is the funniest shit. Yeah, I look like uh, I'm a king of some burger king joint. He's just very unintentionally hilarious at times. But a very cute moment occurs when he sees the bride, Jenny, and she sees him. And they both say how handsome and pretty each other look. And it's very cute. Oh my god. <laughs> and look at you. You are looking gorgeous. Like my heart stopped beating for a moment. Like what? Is this the Jenny or what? Like That's so cute. It's also so unintentionally bad. My heart stopped beating for a moment. I'm like, what? Is that Jenny? And normally when I see Jenny, I'm like, Ugh. First thing we have to do is we have to go and feed the Brahmin. The Brahmins are the top priest people of the Hindu society. By feeding them, we're expecting blessings for our future. So in, you know, traditional Indian ceremony, you feed the Brahmins is what you call them. Coolest thing, you feed them on banana leaves. Really cool to see the Indian tradition ceremonies. Always beautiful. So dear Eva, Mr. Sumit, I welcome you. And your name is? My name is Jenny. Hey. Are wow. <laughs> you spoke Hindi so nicely and correctly. My name is Jenny. Hai. Oh, she does a little Hindi. Oh, this is good. I like it. I like it. When I could see difference in age, I was surprised. But if they are accepting each other, then why should others have any objection? You know what? You think that India, throughout the series, you look at it through a lens and you're like, oh, the Indian people, the Indian culture is so narrow-minded, blah, blah, blah. Then you see people like this, you see a lot of people in the series, most people, in fact. Not only the opposite way, but they're very lovely about it. Saying that even though some people may think a certain way, they see love as love. And it shows that transcending everything is love and people are people and they can understand empathy, love and compassion and care. So don't judge a book by its cover, don't judge a country. It's amazing. Both have won the hearts of each other. And when we win the heart, we do not fight. Carry on. We forget age, we forget our country because love is blind. There we go. Roll credits. Love is blind. Nick Lachey, take notes. I authorize Jenny and Sumit as husband and wife. <laughs> Still have to face the criticism from the parents, they will be mad. The good thing is like now they cannot stop me. So uh, they end up getting married. Everyone authorizes the wedding as you do, like a security pass. And uh, they're now married, they're husband and wife. After 10 years, after three series of this, three seasons, I don't even know. Congratulations to Summit and Jenny. Fantastic, you guys. We made it. That's all I can say is, man, we made it. We made it. And that is how the series ends. Except we're left on a cliffhanger. Did the parents find out? Did they not find out? So I went and I found the tell-all and uh, they're telling the parents on the tell-all. So let's watch some of the tell-all to see what they do. I haven't actually seen this part. I wanted to go in blind because I don't know how the parents are going to react. Welcome to 90 Day Fiance The Other Way. The couples tell all. Jenny and Samid, who have been through so much. So much. Yeah, Sean's back in town. She's fantastic. Jenny and Samit have been through so much. Now let's look at this relationship. Beautiful. Just love how she doesn't actually 
actually do her job well, yet somehow she does. How does it feel to finally be married to Submit? I feel like I can finally breathe right. and they can't throw me out of India. Do your parents know you're married? Uh, no, my parents don't know that. So even on the tell-all after everything, I don't know how for so long Submit has gotten away with this. You can't keep getting away with it! But Sean asked the hard-hitting question, do your parents know? And he's like, nah, nah. Didn't get around to telling them, bruh. And just in 90 day fashion, she's like, we're gonna bring out your parents today and you have to tell them. Right now, we have your parents standing by about to join. I'd also like to bring in Samit's brother and sister-in-law. So she brings in everyone on the show. She's like, I'd like to bring in your parents. I know this is not Jerry Springer, but he's my idol. Also your brother and his wife are here. The baby is missing. We gotta find that in a new episode. Jenny, what what was it like seeing what Smith's parents said after accepting you into the family? All it took was two or three months to pass and everything was forgotten. Oh, damn. The astrologist spell wore off. Jupiter mm -hmm. ascending. Yeah, so it seems like the parents did not actually feel the way that they said they'd feel. I guess that sucks. Bad blood yet again. The astrologer said to get out of the way. Let them be happy. <laughs> Amit, what did she say? <laughs> Sean couldn't afford a translator for this episode. She's like listening to the mom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, brother, say, say words, explain. Damn, the astrologer didn't say that though. The astrologer said don't meddle in their marriage. You're being a selfish mom if you do that. The astrologer set her straight. She just forgot about all that. Sadna and Anel, what would happen if they just said, okay, it's too bad we don't have your blessing. We're just gonna get married anyway. What, what would happen if you saw a ring on Jenny's finger, wink, wink, right now? And Samit said, I've been married for months and haven't told you. What would you say if it happened? Could you possibly punchline this any more clearly? Why do you need the acceptance or the certificate of marriage? You people have to live together and you're living together. Why does anyone get married? To commit to someone. To, it's the eternal act of love. It's uh, it's pledging your allegiance to that person, being like, I am for you and only you. The ring pot I don't know about. That's the ultimate act of Friggin' capitalism. Someone should give me a ring. I wish I had a ring. I want a big ass ring on my finger. Submit, is there anything that you'd like to say to your parents? All right. She's like the teacher now. Submit, cough it up, say it, or I will. I think she's gonna have to blackmail him into saying this. I would like to say that. Well, that's not what she wanted you to say, okay? All right, TED Talk. Okay, Submit, is there anything else you want to say to your parents? Nothing else you guys want to say. No, I cannot, uh, no, no. Are you kidding me? Way to blue balls everyone, dude. I'm leaving. I hate that. That was the worst. You're the worst. All right, well, I was hoping we'd get some kind of resolution here. Me too. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, now we're clear. Your mama's gonna be mad, Samit. When I'm telling them that I'm married, I want my parents in front of me. So Samit makes the decision not to tell his parents on air and says that he's going to do this last part when the cameras are off and when they're face to face. I respect the decision, but I also hate that we don't get the resolution. I wish you the best. Don't forget, tell us what happened. Record it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I guess we've come to the end and uh, I have bad and good news. Bad news is we didn't get a resolution. This might go on a little more. The good news is I found the video in which he tells his parents that he's married. The bad news is I'm not showing this to you because it's from a different season. If you subscribe, I can buy another kurta and I guess we're coming back for the next one, huh? <sighs> Samit and Jenny, the story continues. I guess there's more after all. I thought this was the end, but it never seems to be. Again, I keep saying their relationship is wholesome. It's good. At the end of the day, I enjoy it. But at the same time, the amount of hurdles that they have to face and the amount of, you know, lies that they tell and things that they avoid, I, I don't know if Samit is ready to handle the stuff that sometimes he gets himself into. I Best of luck to him and Jenny. Hopefully you guys will be good. Maybe at the end of the series, I can interview them. If you want that to happen, please let me know down below. And uh, if anybody has any more info on the series, tell me on Instagram. Until then, oh my God. If you're gonna get married to someone like Nike, just do it. All right, bye.